Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the current evacuation plan around Indian Point is a 10-mile zone. There is a plan and there is a zone. Wake up, New York. Wake up, Connecticut. Wake up, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, of the 20 million of the 50-mile zone, based on what's happening in Japan, we are now on notice that if something untoward happens at Indian Point, whether it be a natural disaster, an operational difficulty, a steam pipe burst, a problem with the spent fuel pool, a Chernobyl or a Three Mile Island or something far less dramatic but equally impactful, up to 50 miles or 20 million Americans could be affected. The current 10 mile zone has about 480,000 people in it. And testimony we took yesterday at the Energy, Environment, and Public Safety Committee indicates that the plan that we have currently has plenty of Swiss holes in it right now. But we further understand that given the reality of what's happening in Japan, not hypothetically and not in Hollywood, but on the ground today affecting real human beings, Radiation in high doses is being seen as far as 20 miles at the highest levels and it's affecting Tokyo water at 140 miles away. And a dramatic quote, this was in one of the graphs over the weekend, and it iterates very high concentrations of cesium-137 are being found near the village of Lilate. 25 miles northwest of the plant. These are the Fukushima Daiichi plants in Japan. The levels were about twice as high as the threshold for declaring areas uninhabitable around Chernobyl. Drinking water in Japan is being affected, particularly in the Tokyo area. And ladies and gentlemen, what's happening in Japan is an absolute crisis. Our job as legislators is to know that if there is a risk and public safety potentially being imperiled, our job is to do something about it. And so today, I'm announcing with my colleagues here that we are putting into the Environment and Energy Committee and the Public Safety Committee our resolutions, legislation, our directive that the officials that have direct jurisdiction at the federal level shall declare a 50-mile zone. And we're calling it the New York exception. Ladies and gentlemen, we need the New York exception to the national 50 mile zone. We are not commenting on any nuclear power plant in upstate Iowa or out in California or in upstate New York or wherever it might be. But given the population size and density and the economic reality and the power and the importance of New York in the world and in the, the national economy, it is absolutely critical that there be a 50 mile zone. Wake up New York, your drinking water runs through Westchester County. The New Croton Reservoir and the Kensigo Reservoirs are about 14 miles from the Indian Point plants. Given what's happened in Japan in real life, New York City would lose its drinking water and it would be dumped, according to the DEP, into the Hudson River. Civilization as we know it would be very much impaired. The necessity of that alone to evacuate people would be critical. And when we asked our public safety emergency services individuals yesterday, they confirmed the prevailing wind is down Hudson River towards New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, as the President of the United States, as the NRC Commissioner Jack Jackso, insisted on for all U.S. residents in Japan that there be a 50-mile zone of protection and evacuation for them in Japan. We demand, we insist upon, we need the same 50-mile zone around the Indian Point power plants. What we have seen in the last number of weeks, both in Japan and through testimony that our committees have taken, is that while the risk of something happening might be small, the consequences would be horrific. And our job as legislators is to protect public safety and to do everything we possibly can to balance the benefit of the plan, the plants, and the power against the reality of potentially what could go wrong. So ladies and gentlemen, we believe we certainly are the first jurisdiction in the New York metropolitan area. And except for, I believe, a legislature in Maryland, the, the first or second jurisdiction around the entire country, calling for a 50-mile zone. And I will end with the following quote. This was a quote actually in today's paper 
from a, an Indian Point representative, quote, there is sound evidence and empirical evidence for the current 10 mile emergency planning zone. It is premature to recommend an expansion of that. This was Jerry Nappy, Indian Point spokesman. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no sound evidence. There is no empirical evidence for the current 10 mile zone. There is absolute sound evidence and unfortunate experience that a 50 mile zone is absolutely critical and it is not premature to recommend. It should have been done yesterday. And the New York exception needs to be legislated by our legislators ASAP. One last thing. This is a, a comment on our regulators because what became clear yesterday was that our emergency service personnel, as expert and professional as they are, and whether it be New York City or the emergency workers and service people throughout, are only following directive and dictate and legislation from Washington, from what the federal law requires. Currently, it's, it's 10 miles. We asked FEMA and we asked the NRC, Federal Emergency Management Agency, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, to come to Westchester County in an open meeting to share with us their thoughts and what they're learning in Japan, to share with us their thoughts about what potential changes they might be recommending, and they said the following. This is from FEMA. I, we appreciate the request, but are unable to appear before any local or state legislators by federal regulation. FEMA's role is to support local and state government as they exercise their rights. We would not be able, we would be able to answer any questions regarding our role, however, the plans you seek are the counties. Talk about pushing it down. This is ducking responsibility. And the NRC, thank you for the request, the invitation. I now better understand the committee's desire to speak to the NRC. I know that you've had several conversations with a regional state liaison officer on this matter. And as you can imagine, we are receiving many, many similar requests from quite a few of our congressional, state, and local st stakeholders, and we do not have the resources to accommodate them. Unfortunately, we are unable at this time to provide the right level of management to appear before the committee. The two takeaways today, we want our New York exception to the 10-mile zone. We need, we demand a 50-mile evacuation zone, and that's for our legislators in Washington and our leadership in Albany to push that point home. If you can't legislate it for the whole country, give us our 50 mile zone, give us our New York exception. We in New York demand it and the reality of it is we in New York to protect 20 million people absolutely need it. I'm going to turn it over to Pete Harkum at this time for his comments also. We've been joined by Alfredo Williams, legislator from Greenberg and other parts. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Harkum. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Legislator Kaplowitz. Um, first, I, I want to thank Mike for his leadership on this, this issue as Chair of Committee on uh, Environment and Energy. We've taken a very measured approach here at the Board of Legislators, and what we're doing today is simply asking for a home rule exemption, something that we do across a, a, a broad spectrum of activities. This is about self-determination, about safety for the Hudson Valley. Just a side comment, Legislator, uh, Legislator Kaplowitz mentioned uh, the Croton water system. The 10 towns that he and I represent are currently under a consent order from New York State DEC to remove phosphorus. The cost to do that is $150 million. That's just for phosphorus. Imagine the cost if that were contaminated with radioactive isotopes. That's an aside. Um, the lessons of Fukushima and Chernobyl have told us that radiation does not stop cleanly at borders. And as we learned yesterday in the, the meeting of Public Safety and Committee on Environment and Energy, uh, oftentimes it's, it's a vertical plume, it could be a circular plume. So the evacuation plan is not a neat circle. The, they use the pie wedge analogy, they use the keyhole wedge analogy. Um, but what we've learned based on the high levels of radiation in soil, in water, in hair, in fish, in animals, in food, uh, 25, 100 miles from the plant, that 10 miles is not adequate. Uh, and it's not a scientific measure. As Legislator Kaplowitz mentioned, it's not based on science. We learned yesterday from Legislator Rogowski, who used to work in the Energy Department in the Carter White House, that was a political compromise. Originally, they wanted a 20-mile buffer. It was a political compromise that made it a 10-mile buffer. It was not based in science. If you're talking about 20 miles, you're now talking about over a million people of Westchester County. 
To me, that seems unworkable, but you have to have a plan. If we are serious about protecting public safety, we need the New York exemption for a 50-mile evacuation plan. Further, I think it's irresponsible, and it's been unresponsive of the NRC, not to consider the evacuation plan in the relicensing application. I've been calling on that for three years, and I again insist that the evacuation plan um, be considered in the relicensing application. I, I think I have some personal experience as why it's so critical that we plan. I was involved in the Three Mile Island evacuation uh, 29 years ago. We were 23 miles away from the plant. We evacuated, I believe it was two days later, and what we found on the highways were gridlocked. It was not pandemonium, it was not chaos, it was not panic, but there was gridlock. And that was 23 miles away. That was an area, a rural area, with 100,000 people. We're now talking about a million people in a 20 mile radius, 20 million people in a 50 mile radius. Public safety demands that we have a plan in place to adequately address the safety concerns of all those folks. I would uh, just end um, by quoting from the Witt Report. Uh, James Lee Witt is the former director of FEMA who did an evaluation of the evacuation plan. And I quote, plants adjacent to high population areas should have different requirements than plants otherwise situated because protective actions are more difficult and the consequences of failure or delay are higher. That's from the James Lee Witt Report. This is an imperative initiative for public health and safety. We need a 50-mile evacuation zone. Thank you. And with that, I'll turn it over to Legislator Judy Myers. Thank you very much. Uh, I, too, am fully supportive of uh, this home rule request. We Americans have very, very short memories and we are often driven only to finding solutions for problems when those problems occur. It took, here in Westchester County, it took some incredible flooding in 2007 to spur us on with, with stormwater legislation, stormwater mitigation efforts, and indeed even a congressionally sponsored study of rivers. But that only came after many, many years of intensive flooding. We have the ability to change that here without having to wait for a real reason to increase this radius to 50 miles. We don't want to wait until it's too late. We have the ability to make these changes in our evacuation plans now and I am fully supportive and will vote in favor of a resolution that will urge our congressional and uh, I guess it's all of Washington to allow New York to have this exemption. I would like to turn this over now to uh, my colleague uh, Mary Jane Shimsky. Thank you Judy. As we now know from experiences from previous nuclear disasters, radiation spreads well beyond an arbitrary 10 mile zone. We've recently learned that there's a, uh, a 15,000 square mile area around the Chernobyl plants in Ukraine which have been rendered uninhabitable. If you do the math, that works out to approximately a 69 square mile radius around the plant. We also know that in Japan, the radiation is spreading well beyond the original 12 mile evacuation zone and in fact, we're getting reports of serious contamination, including the drinking water, as far as 50 miles and beyond. And if the Chernobyl precedent holds, and the laws of physics do, are the same in Japan as they are in Europe, the radiation will spread well beyond that. We have to be ready just in case there's a large disaster at Indian Point. We have to think about the 20 million people within the 50 mile zone. As we know, we're talking about most of New York City. And New York City, in addition to having an extremely dense population, has a rather large population that is dependent on mass transit and does not own their own means of escape from the city. For that reason, planning is imperative. And doing it now 
and not waiting for a disaster to strike would save large numbers of lives if a disaster, if the unthinkable were to happen. For that reason, I am proud to support Legislator Kaplowitz's efforts to carve out a New York City exception to the 10 mile evacuation zone. And I think the discussion about the vastness of the disaster that could strike in the event of a nuclear disaster is a constructive one for the public and a constructive one for emergency planners. Because in order to save lives in an emergency, you always have to be prepared in advance. And there is no emergency that requires advanced planning more than this one would. At this time, I'd like to turn over the microphone to my co-legislator from Greenberg, Alfreda Williams. Good morning. I think just about everything has been said. I certainly feel that uh, as an elected official in the County of Westchester, it is incumbent upon me and my colleagues to support this home rule carve out so that we can have the 50 mile radius evacuation zone. As I say, it's imperative. We that live in Westchester County know that uh, it is almost impossible, even on a Friday night, to get out of town in a reasonable length of time. So uh, the fact that we have uh, a fifth, that we will have, or hopefully will have, uh, asking for a 50 mile radius of evacuation will mean that thought, advanced thought has been given to make sure that the 20 million people that live in this area are able to at least have a plan to get out safely. And um, it will save lives, it will produce uh, jobs in the long run, but it'll certainly save lives and make all of us feel a little more secure about what's happening in the world today. I can turn it over now to uh, my colleague, Jose Alvarado. Good morning. Buenos días. Um, quiero darle las gracias a, a los compañeros que están aquí conmigo y a nuestro líder, el señor Kaplowitz, por, pro, um, por introducir esta legislación a, a, a nuestra Junta, ya que como legislador representando Yonkers, y como dijo el señor Kaplowitz, cuando el viento sopla, el, el, el aire va hacia la ciudad de Nueva York. Yonkers, la ciudad que yo represento, está antes de la ciudad de Nueva York y yo nunca he estado cómodo con esa zona de 10 millas. Es muy pequeña y yo creo que el plan de emergencia que tenemos no trabaja. Entonces, lo que estamos pidiendo es una excepción aquí en Westchester y en la zona de 50 millas alrededor de la planta Indian Point para poder le dar garantías. No hay una segunda oportunidad. Una catástrofe llega a pasar en Indian Point y vamos a perder mucha gente, el agua estará contaminada y demás. Y le pedimos a la Comisión Reguladora Nuclear que por favor nos permita esta excepción. Nosotros vamos a mandar un mensaje junto con todos estos colegas de que es necesario como dijo el señor uh, Majority Leader Peter Harkin, este, las plantas nucleares que existen en zonas densamente po populadas, o sea que tienen mucha gente, deben de tener diferentes regulaciones. Y entonces lo que le pedimos a, al gobierno federal y estatal es que nos permitan esta excepción para que haya una zona de evacuación de 50 millas y creo que no es mucho pedir y muchas vidas están en riesgo. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. I'm Procedurally, the next step is the Environment and Energy as well as the Public Safety Committee will now be taking up this matter. I'm confident there will be significant and strong direction that will come out of those deliberations that will give guidance and will give directive to our state representatives, the good work that the governor, the attorney general are doing, and direct guidance and direct initiative and legislation requests to our federal delegation on the Senate and on the congressional side. 
as well as the President and the NRC. Because we're asking for a New York exception, if they're unwilling and unable to change the legislation for the entire country, that's fine. Any population zone of 7 million people or more, that would cover New York and that would give New York a chance to have a plan. I will end with the following. Unless we give on the ground public safety officials the guidance and the directive to plan, they will not plan. And if something bad happens, that artificial line on the map of 10 miles will not shield anybody from any of the potential negative impacts. Give us our 50 mile zone, our public officials will do the best to put together a plan and a course of action should something happen. And it does not just have to be Indian Point related nuclear at the plant. It could be an evacuation plan that could assist us in natural disasters and other things as well. At this point, barring any further comments, take questions obviously from, from you good ladies and gentlemen of the press. Thank you.